Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to another Kids Ministries lesson. Today we're going to learn about three parables that Jesus taught, all with the same message, things that were lost and then are found. Well, we've all lost things, boys and girls. I lost something very near and dear to me when I was middle-aged. You understand what the definition of middle age is. Middle age is when your age starts to show around your middle. Well, what I lost when I was middle aged was my memory. If any of you find my memory, would you please bring it on Sunday? I would greatly appreciate that. Well, before we learn about these three parables, let's sing our parable song. Sing with me. Parable, parable, come and hear a parable. Open your eyes to see, open your ears to hear, and listen to a parable. Parable, parable, come and hear a parable. Open your eyes to see, open your ears to hear, and listen to a parable. It's a story in a story, listen closely to what I say. It means more than you might think at first, it can change your life today. Parable, parable. Come and hear a parable. Open your eyes to see, open your ears to hear, and listen to a parable. Let's hear the three parables of Jesus about something that was lost and now is found. So boys and girls, our story today involves the teaching of three parables. As you know, as Jesus went from place to place, he had a large following. He also had 12 disciples that he had specially chosen to teach the principles of the kingdom of God so they could start the New Testament church. But he also had some enemies, the Pharisees and the scribes. And boys and girls, our story today takes place while he was teaching some sinners who did not believe in the kingdom of God and some tax collectors who were evil men who collected way too much money and gave it to the Roman government. And there were some people that overheard all this, the Pharisees and the scribes, and they said, this man, look at that. He hangs out with sinners and he even eats with them. Well, Jesus knew what they were thinking because he was God in the flesh. And so he told them three stories. The stories were designed to explain to them something that could be best told in a earthly story, but it had a heavenly meaning. And so he told them three back-to-back -back quick parables. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost son. So boys and girls, as you know, in the Middle East, Shepherding was a very important occupation back then. And in fact, these men would get huge flocks of sheep and run them from grass patch to grass patch and from watering hole to watering hole, carefully guarding them from wolves and thieves and injury. And they kept very good care of them. Well, one day... In the story that the parable Jesus was telling, a shepherd noticed that instead of his usual 100 sheep, he only had 99. Oh no! Where was the other sheep? He couldn't find it anywhere. And so, boys and girls, he started looking high and low. He climbed up in the mountainside looking for his lost sheep. And as he searched and searched and searched, he couldn't find it anywhere, but he refused to give up. He loved this lost sheep so much 
that he was willing to spend incredible amounts of time seeking for this lost sheep. And then finally, he heard, way off in the distance, meh, meh, meh. He ran toward the sound, and there he found his lost sheep. Loving this sheep so much, he cared for it, and he picked it up, and he slung it over his shoulder, and he walked with this sheep all the way back to the flock. Boys and girls, this shepherd represents your heavenly father who loves you also and is willing to carry your burdens, the burdens of your sin. Boys and girls, this was no light sheep. The average sheep weighs 250 pounds. And this shepherd, representing a loving God, will carry your sins just as this shepherd carried the burden of this sheep. He took him back to the flock, and then he did the most unusual thing. He called for a party. He got the other shepherds together, and they had a celebration. Jesus, talking to the scribes and to the Pharisees, told them, he said, I say to you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 who just think they don't need repentance. Boys and girls, here's a great verse that summarizes our relationship as sheep to the shepherd, our heavenly shepherd. For we all, according to Isaiah 53, 6, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Boys and girls, every one of us, just like sheep, have gone astray. We have wandered from the wonderful, loving care of our Heavenly Father. We've turned to our own way, our own selfish, sinful way. But God still loves us. And He, our Heavenly Father, has laid on Him, Jesus, the iniquity, the wickedness, the sinfulness of all of us. Jesus took our place and got punished for our sins when he hung on the cross. So all of us who are disobedient and sinful sheep can come back to him and thank him for the price that he paid on our behalf when he died on the cross for our sins. Boys and girls, God desires a relationship with you both here on the earth and someday in heaven where he is right now making a place for you to live with him forever and ever. And then Jesus tells another parable, a parable of the lost coin. In the Middle East, when a woman got married, she was given a headband, and it usually had 10 coins on it. 10 because in Jewish thinking, 10 was the number of perfection and harmony. Just as a marriage is perfect and harmonious when two people are joined together, so this headband represented that perfection and harmony by hanging 10 coins on it. Uh Uh-oh, boys and girls, look what happened. A coin is missing. Can you imagine the horror when she realized that one of her coins was missing? Boys and girls, in Middle Eastern Jewish times, a husband could even divorce his wife if part of her headband was damaged. That's why she began to look everywhere. She fervently sought for the coin. Was it in the yard? Was it in the area where she cooked? Was it on the floor of her storage area? She lit lamps and she even, into the late night, persisted in looking for the lost coin. Where was it, boys and girls? She swept the floor. She was desperate to find the coin. And finally, there it was. She picked it up and She replaced it on the headband, and she called for a party, a celebration that the lost coin had been found. Jesus turned to his listeners, and he said, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What does repentance mean, boys and girls? It means turning from this kind of attitude, this selfish, hardened, evil, sinful, arrogant, stubborn 
attitude. This sin that grips our heart in the chains of disobedience to God. And boys and girls, at the cross, Jesus broke those chains, the power of that sin. And now we are free from it. And we are free to repent and turn from our sins and instead turn to God. To commit your life to God. To turn from a life of selfishness and instead turn, repent, and become obedient to your God. The God who loved you all the way to the cross. The God who tells us how to become like his son Jesus in the words of the Bible. This is all possible according to 1 Peter 3.8 because Christ died for sins once for all. The righteous, Jesus, for the unrighteous, us. Why? To bring you to God. You cannot take your sinful state into the presence of a holy God. And that's why Jesus took the punishment for our sins so that now we can come to the holy presence of God forgiven of our sin. Boys and girls, let's do that right now. Let's make sure that we have a relationship with Jesus. Pray with me if you would, please. Dear God, I thank you that you died on the cross in the person of your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging there until all of my sin was punished and paid for. I believe that you did that because you love me, and I repent of my sin, and I turn to you in obedience. May I live for you all of my life, serving you with my whole heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, boys and girls, when that happens, and we are reserved a place in heaven, it says in the Bible that all of the angels celebrate and rejoice. Well, Jesus then turned to the third parable, the parable of the lost son. That son on the left side of the father is looking away from his father. He has a desire to leave the home and go outside of the protection of the family and live the way he wants to live sinfully. So he goes to his father and he says, Father, I want my inheritance. Give me that portion of the goods that you owe me when you die. But I want it now even though you're not dead. Just give it to me. And the father cooperated with this evil request and gave one-third of his inheritance to the son. The other son in the background, who's hugging the weeping mother because she's about to lose her son, was about to get two-thirds of the inheritance because the older son always got twice what the younger son did. Well, this younger son took his money, and he scurried off to a faraway land. He was headed to waste his money and spend it on himself. The father was so sad to see his son go, but he allowed it, and the son continued his trip to waste money. The Bible says in riotous living, just wasting it on silly things that would tempt him in this large city. When he arrived there, he instantly found some friends, if you want to call them that. They were just people that could get what they wanted from him. They depleted his money by taking him to things like maybe chariot races where he would gamble his money away. And then he would waste it by getting drunk on alcohol and and spending nights with people, with girls that weren't even his wife. These prostitutes, these harlots. Oh, I can't believe he did that, boys and girls. He was so proud, but look what happens to the proud boys and girls. According to James 4, 6, God opposes the proud. He resists the proud. He stiff arms. He holds at arm's length those who are prideful. But he gives grace to those who are humble. Boys and girls, you do not want to be opposed by God. Watch what happened to this young man. Pretty soon he had nothing left by way of money. His friends look at him with disdain on their face and they leave him. 
and he has no friends, no family, no money, no food, and there's a famine in the land, and he's starving. And so what happens, boys and girls? He has to take whatever job he can get just to stay alive. And so he takes a job, of all things, with a pig farmer. A pig farmer? Are you kidding me? A Jewish boy working and caring for pigs? Jewish people did everything they could to stay away from pigs. They refused even to touch them. But this man had no choice. This disobedient son had to lower himself to caring for pigs just to stay alive. Boys and girls, as he reached over and grabbed pods off the carob trees to feed them. He was so hungry, he would even have eaten the pods off these trees. But it would be like eating tree bark. He couldn't digest it. And he was famished and he was so hungry. And then, boys and girls, it says in the Bible that he came to his senses. And he said to himself, what am I doing? How many of my father's hired servants have plenty of bread, and I'm starving. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go back to my father. I'm just going to tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm not worthy even to be called your son. Go ahead. Make me like one of your hired servants. I don't care, God. I just want to come back to you. I said the word God because that's who the Father represent. That's who he is a picture of. And you can call on God any time to help you, boys and girls. You will have times when you will turn your back on God in your future. Just call on him and confess your sin and repent and come back to him. God waits for you with open arms. He loves you, boys and girls. And so the son headed back in the direction of his father. And there his father was waiting for him to come back with open arms and he ran down the path and he hugged him and he kissed them and the son started to say but but father i have sinned against heaven and and against you and i'm not worthy to be called your son but the father said in the presence of his servant he said get the best robe that you can. Let's put it on him. Let's put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and let's have a party. And so, boys and girls, that's exactly what happened. They began to celebrate the return of this young man. A party held because he had returned to his loving father. In the meantime, out in the field, the son, the older son, could hear this party going on. And he called the servant and he said, hey, what's going on? And the servant said, your brother has come home. He's safe and sound. And your father is having a party for him. Oh, but the brother was furious. He refused to go to the party. And so the father came out to his son and he said, son, please, come back. But the son said, listen, listen, you, for these many years I have been serving you, and I have never disobeyed you. You never gave me a party, but this son of yours comes, and what happens? You you have a party for him, even though he's wasted things on prostitutes, and, and, and you kill the fatted lamb for him, and you give him a party? And the father says, son, listen, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we have this party, for your brother was dead, and now he's alive again. He's, well, he was lost, and now he's found. And the party, boys and girls, continued Boys and girls, this party was held because the son repented and came back to the father. 
But boys and girls, when Jesus looked out on the city of Jerusalem, he saw a group of unrepentant Jews, fellow brothers and sisters, Jewish people who rejected him. Boys and girls, he wept over that city. And he cried and he said, you were not willing to accept me. Boys and girls, he knew that would happen. And he willingly went to the cross and he shed his blood for those very same people that rejected him. He stepped out in love and gave his life for them. Boys and girls, Romans 10, 13 tells us, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Boys and girls, if you will just call on the name of the Lord and say, Jesus, thank you for what you did for me on the cross. I believe that you died for my sins. If you do that, boys and girls, you will be saved, saved from the penalty of your sin in a terrible place where the unsaved will go called hell. Boys and girls, I'm asking you to do that, to pray that prayer that we prayed earlier and thank Jesus for the wonderful gift of eternal life, of salvation from the penalty of your sins. So boys and girls, I pray that you have not missed the simple meaning of these three parables. That which was lost can be found. And there is a celebration in heaven when you in your lost state have been found by God. Boys and girls, walk with God this week and be a blessing. And I hope to see you on Sunday.